So uh, Wood McKenzie is the leading data analytics and consultancy company uh, in the energy and natural resources space. Right? So we do not only have the breadth, we cover across upstream gas, downstream chemicals, low carbon technologies including CCS and hydrogen as well, um, but we also cover the metals and mining space, right? coal, lithium, nickel. So with, with that breadth of knowledge and also the depth of knowledge, we really can connect the dots to really understand what are the constraints that we are facing in the world as well as what are the opportunities we see in terms of how we can accelerate energy transition. Um, that's really our va unique value proposition at Wood McKenzie. So I think from my perspective, right, one of the key things companies look at uh, is really how the world is going to evolve. Right? There are a lot of near-term uh, challenges, near-term risk and geopolitical risk as well. I think you know, from, from our perspective, we provide a lot of information for, us to, for them to be able to sift through the noise and understand what is real and what is not real. And that is delivered through our short-term uh, solutions. But oh, from a longer term perspective, where we're seeing a lot of challenges companies having is primarily in the strategy definition stage, right? The world is evolving so fast. I think if you think about the conversations we were having over the last two years, it was how fast energy transition will uh, occur and how fast some of the low carbon technologies will continue to progress, right? Hydrogen, CCS, and even renewables as well. Fast forward two years, uh, where we are today, a lot of the conversation now is for more focused around energy security and there's more of a discussion around whether energy transition may be delayed, right? And I think that's the reality that we're seeing where, you know, energy transition is not happening in a, in a linear manner and I think energy transition also means different things for different uh, countries and companies as well. No, I think the seventh uh, strategic energy plan, that's uh, a plan in which we think is extremely balanced and ex uh, a lot more realistic. I think if you look through the publication and uh, the plan in itself, they provide a lot of scenarios, right? And this, I came back to this earlier. Um, it's really these scenarios that, that's highlighting the uncertainty that we are facing in this world today. And that scenario allows, I guess, companies and uh, in operating in Japan and also looking to invest in Japan to understand what the outlook would look like. So a few things kind of pop up, right? One, we've seen uh, the renewables target being shifted back a bit further as compared to before. So it's a less aggressive renewables target. From our perspective, we, when we looked at it even previously, we thought that that was a bit too aggressive. Um, costs would not come down as fast as we expect it to be. And I think that's the reality of it. But then again, we are still seeing that growth in renewables energy and I think again, that, that, that shows the real, how realistic that is. Uh, the other part is, is really with regards to gas, right? And I think this is really interesting because they have a, uh, a slower technology progress scenario, I'd have to say. Uh, and that scenario really shows the range of uncertainties uh, that I think governments and countries will have to manage when it comes to the energy outlook. And so if you look at the difference in the forecast that they have, I think from Wood Mackenzie's perspective, we have about 50, 54 million tons of uh, demand by 2040. Um, but if you look at kind of on the high side and the kind of the delayed uh, scenario perspective, as is illustrated uh, by the seventh energy plan, that could increase up to another 20 million tons. And I think if, if you see the conversations that we are having today in the conference, a lot of it is around energy security. It's a lot, a lot of it is about uh, securing the, the LNG and the, the fuel that is required uh, to power uh, the economic growth in Japan. And so, so from our perspective, that's something that, that we see a visible shift in and I think uh, a visible shift in the conversations. And I think these are the conversations that we need to have to be able to progress uh, energy transition in a more balanced and pragmatic manner. And I, th I think the conversation that, that we are having in Japan is not necessarily that unique uh, when you compare that to the rest of the world. I think Japan has its unique situation in which it doesn't have natural resources, of course. Uh, and as a result, a lot of the discussion here is in terms of how do you secure that, how do you import that. I think when you look at the program and what's been discussed, a few key highlights come up, right? First is AI. 
and how much demand AI is going to generate from a power perspective. And of course, that's been illustrated in the seventh uh, strategic energy plan as well. Um, the second part here, I think, as we discuss is, is again around gas and the importance of gas as part of the energy transition. The conversation has changed a lot from we do not want fossil fuels, not necessarily specifically in Japan, but I think in the rest of the world, into gas is part of the solution, right? And gas is part of the energy transition roadmap. And I think that is kind of being loud, heard loud and clear here. Um, I think the other part which makes me really excited is that we still are continuing to have a conversation around some of the low carbon technologies, CCS, hydrogen, uh, for example. These are really, well, so technologies that really allow us to decarbonize. It is progressing a bit slower than we expect it to be. Uh, but again, without these conversations, we will never get progress. And so coming together uh, to discuss how we can um, kind of accelerate, scale all these technologies uh, are, 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 is very important. And, as, and also, I think Japan is doing a great job in um, driving through this progress, right? If you think through uh, the auction program that they have for hydrogen, if you think through the, the I would say the initiatives that they have uh, in trying to progress cross-border CCUS, I think they are also taking the lead in the region uh, to be, be able to uh, progress a lot of these low carbon technology as well. So all in all, I think it's, 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 a, it's a great um, place to have a very pragmatic conversation. Uh, I think it's based around the realities of Japan, but it's not only about Japan, it's about the, the region and even more so around the world, especially when it comes to you know, LNG, for example, as you mentioned earlier.